Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. In the course of change, leaders generally have uh, some levers about enabling or about substantive. The enabling levers are credibility, communication and training and substantive levers are technical, political and cultural. We will get to know more about this uh, in the designing intervention. What is to be done? Whatever is done in order to bring about the change? is intervention. A good intervention is which is relevant, which is based on the causal knowledge of intended outcome and it transfers the competence to manage change to organizational members. So, this is the core of the organization development process, interventions, but interventions must be scientifically identified based on the valid information, free informed choices and internal commitment. We need to know why we are doing what we are doing. Managers cannot just start any intervention because it is because they are comfortable about it. And secondly, the objective of the intervention is to make organizations capable of solving their problems themselves. In order to bring about the changes and to follow these steps, whatever is done is called intervention. So, intervention is a set of sequenced and planned action. It is not haphazard, but it is a sequenced and planned action or events intended to help the organizations increase its effectiveness and interventions purposely disrupt the status quo. What is going on is not appropriate, is not the best and we need to do things differently or different things that is the objective of any intervention. Can you think about some change initiatives which you have experienced or you know about? And we must remember that anything being done in order to enhance the organizational effectiveness consciously is an intervention. You invite an expert that is intervention. You hold the interview for the key people to adopt some changes is also intervention. You make a presentation to build a case to bring about new technology or to set up new process is also intervention. So, there are some very specialized intervention which we will discuss in this, in the, in this course, but even the simple steps are also interventions. So, can you think about some of the interventions? You must have experienced the intervention in the form of leadership development program you might be part of that. Uh, you might have also experienced the management development program. Uh, some technical development programs are also part of the interventions. You might have also seen the, you talked about the merger and acquisition. Merger and acquisition is, is also an intervention. Have you ever experienced performance appraisal system being changed? That is also intervention because it is talking about this performance appraisal, the purpose of performance appraisal system is to direct people towards the desired behavior. That is also intervention. Have you ever seen salary structure being changed, change in bands, change in the incentive plans? That is also intervention. Many of you might have worked in the organization which are responsible or which are, uh, which have the job of implementing ERP. Enterprise resource planning through SAP or Oracle. Isn't it an intervention? It is also an intervention using technology because uh, you might have noticed that bringing about any change in the ERP through in uh, through ERP uh, using uh, the softwares of uh, Oracle or SAP uh, or other any other customized software, it is not only about bring 
technological change it is a lot about the human behavioral change as well so if you look at the interventions interventions can be of different category first category of intervention are related to the human processes conflict resolution leadership development attitude building setting up the mindset these are the human process interventions why human process interventions are called process interventions because behavior is the outcome we want employee to behave in certain way and that behavior is result of a process what is that process that process is about holding certain kind of assumptions certain morals and beliefs values and those moral beliefs and values perceptions and assumptions result in the behavior so human process interventions are called process interventions because they not only look at the behavior but they look at the governing variables of the behavior that's why they are called human process interventions then another category of the intervention is techno structural intervention which the erp is most commonly used and most common example of the techno structural intervention where we have the technology as the driver but it has impact on the organization design human process uh, interaction of the different departments etc human resource management we talked about some of the hrm processes reward and recognition system performance management system salary and wage administration these are also the important levers for bringing about any change and then comes the strategic intervention strategic interventions are when two organizations uh, go for merger or some acquisition or there is a major shift in the uh, long term objectives and the ways of functioning uh, of organization so we can look at these uh, human intervention in depth and in the next classes we'll have cases to look at what might be the more appropriate mo most appropriate intervention in those cases Uh, look at the human process intervention the first the primary is like about process consultation and team building many organizations send their people for the outdoor programs um, or the indoor uh, team building activities generally team building goes through the process of storming norming performing and joining and these uh, uh, team building processes make people aware of their gender disposition in the team climate we otherwise are not generally aware of how do i behave in a team uh, when i am working in a team so when other than job context some team task is given that's a good opportunity for me to look at how do i behave in a team how do i communicate in a team and based on that experience and with the input of the facilitator and the Uh, self reflection uh, people can work on the their behavior and disposition in the team conflict resolution uh, that is this is generally done in the in the presence of third party conflict also aggravate in certain steps and uh, there are steps through which conflict can be resolved by making people aware of the each other's perspective by making people aware of the each other's perception and how to reconcile their evaluation about each other and their objectives can help in conflict resolution there are organizational confrontation meeting you must have seen conflicts between two departments like quality and production sometimes there are conflicts between marketing and finance advertising and sales so in the organizational confrontation meetings in the presence of facilitator different uh departments can look at how do they perceive each other and what are the misperceptions based on those confrontation uh, the the problems can be resolved inter group relationships uh within the same department within same uh, function different groups might be responsible for different things if you remember what we discussed in the organization design we, we talked about few classical challenges of organization design and one of the classical challenge is integration versus fragmentation what that it means when organizations uh, grow they keep making new departments but their freedom to make as many department as they wish to is not there because uh, 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 the when we make new department it creates new silos and people start identifying with that department more 
than the organization as a whole and that silo mentality creates the uh, conflict and misperception. So, intergroup relationship is generally the result of the uh, bifurcation in the functions and roles. So, instead of fragmentation it should be integration and to ensure the integration human process interventions are involved and then there are large group interventions. We will discuss these large group interventions in terms of the uh, strategic planning for the systemic intervention for, for open space method, world cafe. There are some very fascinating methods to engage hundreds and even thousands of people for the change process. Otherwise, it is so difficult even to get 10 people talk coherently and to reach to some solution. You put 10 people, you bring some issue, different people will keep interrupting each other, they may not be able to reach to the conclusion. But in OD there are processes where you can engage hundreds and thousands of people in a systematic way, they can converse on certain things, they can converge on certain uh, conclusions and based on those conclusions action agenda can also be formed. So, these are the there are some powerful methods about large scale uh, large group intervention that is what we are going to uh, discuss in this, in this course. Then there are techno structural interventions. How many of you have seen organization design is being changed? You might remember there are functional of functional metrics and divisional structures which are the very core structure, very basic organization. But what we see today with the presence of technology, you have network organization, you have organizations which are operating on the hub and scope model, there are organizations which are team based and there are organizations which are even virtual. So, how to bring about the organization design change? Design change are some of the most crucial and some of the most sensitive changes because design change uh, brings about change in the line of communication, reward system and power. So, it is a most sensitive form of change and in your simulation please remember do not introduce design change with, uh, without sufficient groundwork, downsizing that is the reality of today's uh, business world. Uh, there was a time when even in the Indian uh, industry downsizing was not allowed, but now there are lot of examples to suggest that downsides, downsizing in one industry may result in increase in the job and job opportunities in other industry. But that requires a kind of preparedness that requires training and retraining. So, downsizing can also be an important strategy and a OD intervention. Reengineering that simply means reengineering simply means if we start this plant or production activity 30 years from now how it will look like. So, you bring about all the futuristic technologies what all are the possibilities and try to implement that in the present situation. Parallel structures this these are very commonly used interventions in the R and D when uh, in the, the R and D uh, you are working on some crucial projects you also make parallel structure to work on the same project the same with by different people and uh, in that way organization get two innovative products, processes or ideas. High involvement organization is also called high performance work systems which are combination of the HR and structural intervention that is what we are going to discuss. Total quality management is about involving everybody on the shop floor and from the shop floor to the top floor to enhance the processes and systems and total quality management is a very holistic intervention where uh, you have small teams operating on the shop floor, they look at some system, some processes which can further improve, they give their recommendation to the bigger authority, to the bigger uh, body and that is how the suggestions move to the top level and the implementation is sanctioned. So, total quality management is one thing which almost change the phase of management in late 70s and 80s. Then HR process human resource management function also has certain levers about organization uh, about the organization uh, development, performance management system, reward system, 
coaching and mentoring is becoming very popular these days performance management system involves performance appraisal performance development and performance planning when organizations objective change we need to change the performance appraisal as well only change in the performance appraisal will not bring about any permanent change in the behavior performance change in the performance appraisal need to be substantiated with the change in the development process which means training and development should support the outcome of the performance appraisal so it's an end to end process a reward system uh, there is a famous pareto law uh, uh, and the normal distribution curve for many many years organizations believed that performance is a uh, performance shows a normal distribution curve and that's why you can't have a very drastic difference between rewards of the people on the same cadre but uh, there is a growing recognition and there is a research as well to support this based on the data of 60000 plus people agwinis and his team what they have found is performance is generally not distributed as a normal curve it follows a pareto law means generally the 20% of the top performers do 80% of the uh, they, they bring 80% of the result so if that is so that needs to be accounted in the reward system and that's why you see in the google and microsoft and even in the netflix on the same cadre some people uh, are getting 300% 200% of the average salary prevailing in that cadre that's a result of this this kind of analysis uh, this situation would have resulted in a lot of unrest had it not been supported by proper audit intervention and proper research so reward system can be a very can be a powerful intervention coaching and mentoring in the dynamic environment mentoring is important so that people know how do they see themselves in years to come within the organization and within the industry so mentoring gives a perspective and coaching is generally done for some specific skill there is there are a lot of skills which cannot be taught directly in the classrooms it is best being taught by executive coaches or being taught by the supervisors uh, so coaching and mentoring but coaching and mentoring also cannot happen naturally it has to be implemented as an intervention there has to be a system if i want to enhance the coaching and mentoring in the organization i need to include that capability and that kind of behavior in the performance management as well so that's how it can become a ori intervention career planning and development now we see it's a knowledge economy people don't identify themselves with the organization many people identify themselves large and large and more and more number of people are identifying themselves uh, with the profession or with the technology they are working when in this environment they are more concerned about how their career can progress in years to come and that can be a very important that has to be a very important ori intervention training mdp management development program and leadership development program are more systematic interventions and what we see in the management development and leadership development program these are offered as a combination of the in class and outdoor activities these are the combination of the coaching in class instruction and action learning projects so this is called embedded learning system so generally development plans include the embedded learning plan managing workforce diversity in multinational organizations it is more prevalent but it is more and more recognized in the indian organizations as well that we have to have diversity means we need to have representation for both the genders as well as people from different community because if we if there is only one type of people keep populating the environment that becomes dysfunctional it is not good for innovation it is not good for good for inclusive growth it is also not good to remain more sensitive to the market needs so the workforce diversity has become a very important initiative in many organizations it is also a, 
uh, a kind of OD interventions. Fun at work, you might have seen HR organizing birthday parties or some celebrations. That is the sign that people not only come to work for earn their livelihood, they also want to have fun because ultimately they are spending uh, largest number of hours, uh, largest number of the waking hours at the workplace. And then comes the employee, employee wellness programs. Only talking about performance and not working on the energy of the organization, uh, energy of the employees may be uh, detrimental to the employees as well as to the organization. In the long run, uh, there are, there is a recognition that in the long run, organizations need to make people sense to about their associates, how they manage their energy, that means their mental, physical, spiritual and emotional energy. There are a lot of interventions like Art of Living Foundation is having interventions in the corporate world, the, the Isha Foundation is also having the yoga program, they conduct the interventions in the corporate world and many many um, uh, yoga, contemplative practices, mindfulness has become a very important intervention. If you look at the mindfulness research in last 10 years, hundreds and thousands of research studies are demonstrating the different impact of the mindfulness. This is the result of, of the fact that more and more organizations are implementing mindfulness at their, uh, in their uh, workplaces. Then there are strategic interventions. So strategic interventions can be of the transformational nature and more of a transitional nature. Transformational nature of the inter strategic interventions are integrated strategic change. Uh, you see the example of ITC uh, changing its product portfolio from that tobacco based product to more uh, sane product, more positive products is example of the strategic change intervention. Organization design, uh, major change in the organization design, change in the business model, major changes in the culture, these are all are the results of the, uh, are the examples of the transformational change. And then comes the transitional change, merger and acquisition, it is a step by step process. Generally, merger and acquisition it involves the financial due diligence and then the cultural due diligence. Only financial due diligence, not doing cultural due diligence may result in uh, uh, failure of the mergers and acquisition. Most of the mergers and acquisitions are not being able to give the desired result or expected results, not because the financial due diligence is not there, primarily because the cultural integration uh, is, not, is not done well. Then comes the alliances and networks. Having alliances to, uh, to operate in their different geography, to capture the different customer segments and having the network to, uh, uh, to access to the new market or to access to the new segment is again the example of the strategic intervention. Self-designing organization meaning uh, non-conventional design which is supported by the community and societies. Organization learning and knowledge management. Uh, more and more organizations are recognizing that knowledge is the thing which is uh, which gives the complete advantage. Uh, creating knowledge is the milestone, is the cornerstone of the complete advantage. And uh, so, if you look at the Google or if you look at the 3M, it is difficult to decipher whether they are competing on the product or actually they are competing on. Uh, learning and new, creating new knowledge. So, that is also a strategic intervention. So, when we look at knowledge and expertise as the source of the complete advantage, built to change organizations are the uh, dynamic organizations. If you remember in the previous session, we talked about a company called Nilimin. It is started as a, a textile company, it, uh, it moved to the special to the chemical companies and now it is uh, identified more as a leader in the specialized chemicals. So, as the change is going on because of the global forces, because of the technology and the economic forces, how organizations are able to change their portfolio, uh, that is the, uh, this is also part of the strategic intervention. The design of effective intervention, we may know that a particular intervention is required, but it might not be successful in that organization until these things are, these preconditions are met. Readiness for change, capability to change, cultural context and capabilities of the change agent. All four factors are equally important. 
organization know that they need to enhance the innovation organization may know they need to be more market oriented but if they don't have the readiness if people don't have the competency then change process will not take place cultural context i if my culture is very bureaucratic if my culture is very paternalistic and if my organization need to be more market savvy then it will require a cultural due diligence it will require a cultural readiness we we need to make the cultural context ready to implement certain change process i implemented in a very bureaucratic system i implemented i implement erp in a system where very poor communication is there it will not work and of course the change agent the capability of the change change agent many times the change agents are engaged not based on their expertise in the capability uh, based on the organization's comfort level with them or familiarity with them if a technical techno structural change is required and a change agent is very very usually biased towards human process change or the person is not appreciative of the design related changes then uh, also uh, the ordinary interventions will not be successful 